Hello, everyone, and welcome to LinkedIn Live from NICE. I'm David Wasserman, and this is Omer Fuchs. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Today, we're here to talk to you about the three best practices in robotic process automation. As you can see, we're broadcasting from a very unique location, a rental car parking lot. But Omer and I just flew in on a business trip, and Omer is a thought leader in this area. And we thought it would be a great opportunity to cover this subject with you, our audience, in LinkedIn. So Omer, sure. just for the audience, just give a little bit of an overview. What is exactly robotic process automation? Sure, David. Happy to do so. I think we live in a fascinating time. Robotic process automation is a wonderful technology that it enters the life of many organizations by now. It's essentially taking repetitive, mundane tasks, a lot of business processes that is done by humans until today, and putting some automation into it. This automation takes many forms and shapes. It can be unattended automation. It could be attended automation on the desktop. It can involve multiple technologies like artificial intelligence and machine learning. But at the end of the day, it's there to bring a efficiency to our work processes and to make our life easier. Okay, that was great. So as you know, we've got a long ride to the meeting. So why don't we pick a rental car? Sure. They've given us a selection of we three. We need to get going. Yeah, you're, you're doing the driving, so I'll let you actually do the choices. By all means. Okay. okay, let's start. So how about this car? That looks nice. You know what? I think this one is going to be too small for me. Yeah, so uh, me, I could make it. You, too big. You I'm going to skip this one. Yeah. How about this one, David? This one is nice. I like it. Uh, let me have a quick look inside. Uh, no. You know what? I think uh, it's not fueled, so okay. I'm not gonna sure it's gonna get us to okay, our well destination. Okay, well we have a so. long ride, so we gotta be sure there's plenty of fuel. Yeah, for sure. let's check that. Oh, this is a nice one. This looks fabulous. You know what? Everything, yeah, you know what, David? I think we found our car. This is gonna be the choice for us. Okay, this so, will take us to our destination. So, Omer, how does this process of choosing a rental car have anything to do with robotic process automation? This brings us to our first best practice, which okay. is automation discovery. Eventually, what have we done here? We looked at different options, trying to find what is the right car to, to get us to our destination. And this is what happens with automation as well. How do you start? How do you open the automation journey? How do you find the right processes to even automate? What is going to get you that yield result, that ROI that you were looking for? And that's a very key question in every automation journey how to discover the right processes to automate in the first place. Okay, so we had three rental cars to choose from. Yeah. A business is extremely complicated, thousands of processes, potentially thousands of people. Yeah. How does a, the right solution actually sift through all that and pick the right processes to go after first? Excellent question, actually. In real life, it's much more complicated than just choosing one car out of three. We have tens and hundreds of business processes. How do you choose the right one? And this is where technology is coming to the help. We have the technology today to actually install a client on the desktops of all the employees, intercept a lot of data about their desktop activity, put all of that into a large database, and, and then run some advanced uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms to really find out which processes you want to automate. We're looking for common patterns, for common denominators to see what employees are doing again and again the same, and then we can find out how long it takes them, what's good, the average handling time, how many users are doing the same process, and which applications are involved. All of that eventually is going to help us choose the right process and be sure that we chose the correct process to get us to that ROI. Okay, that was super clear, well understood. So we've got to get going. So somehow in parallel, we've got to continue to have our discussion. Yeah. But let's, let's first do. figure out where we're going. The rental car agency told me that in the front seat, you have the there's address. a map, I, you, I have the address. Let me just try to navigate let's go, let's us go. to where we're going to go. Ready. Hold on one second. Let me check the address here. Yeah, I think we can make it on time. You ready, David? I, I, Omer, I, I have you, a map. What do you have there? A map. And what's that in your hand? A compass. A map and a compass, Of course. David. How else are Seriously. we going to get there? Come here, come here. I, I have something to show you. You know, this, was, this is a, an advanced GPS software on my phone, okay. Google Maps. Okay. And this is going to get us to our destination quick and easy. Okay, I have to ask. All right. How does ahead. something like that relate to robotic process automation? This is our second practice, actually, David, okay. and I'm glad you're asking. This is automation for the people. 
what, do we, what are we talking about? We're talking about a virtual attendant, an assistant, something that is being put on my desktop, helping me as an employee do my job easier. We all have to master multiple applications, a lot of knowledge, a lot of tools, a lot of skills. It's confusing, it's not easy. But if we have an advanced attendant automation solution on our desktop, like Google Maps here on our phone, it's going to help us do our job easier. We're going to take less time, most likely make less mistakes. You can get lost if you're not taking very close attention at your map or you're not using the compass uh, frequently enough. But if you have that automation that is there to keep you safe, to guide you to the destination, most likely you're going to make it there on the first attempt and you're going to make it easy and fast. And by the way, more fun. So this second best practice of automation for the people, is that just about saving time? Or is there actually more to the story, more benefit? Definitely more, definitely more. People think sometimes that automation is all about saving time and reducing sure. average handling time, yeah. which is a wonderful thing to have, and it's part of automation. But when we talk about automation for the people or attended automation, there's a lot more than saving time. Just as an example, what I just told you, making mistakes. What about compliance with regulations? Sometimes the, the cost of a mistake could be very high for organizations. So if you know that you have that magic solution, that virtual attendant on the desktop, that is going to be aware of what's happening and keeping everyone safe from making those crucial mistakes, that's a great ROI by itself. And I'll give you one more example. What about increasing sales? Every company wants to sell more. If you have that technology on the desktop of all your employees, you could take advantage of those golden opportunities to upsell or cross-sell with a virtual attendant that just appears on the desktop and say, hey, David, did you know that you can now offer this package or that product? And from that, you can yield another great ROI. OK, so we're running late. We've covered the, some of the best practices. Can, yeah. we, can we get going? I think we're we talking too car. much. You've talked about Let's how we're going to get there. Let's go. Let's go do it. Hit, hit the road. Uh, one more thing before we do. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. It just came to me. Okay. It might be a good idea to have a quick look here just to see we have enough of this oil and this race fluid. And what about the tires? Did you have a look at the tires? Uh, yeah. Sure. I think we're good. So uh, once again, yeah. how does something like this relate to robotic process automation best practice? What am I talking about? We're talking about maintenance, right? We have a car. We know it can get us to our destination, but we want it to be there with us for the long term. Maintaining your solution is important. And in our world in automation, that's the third best practice I would like to share with you today. We call it center of excellence. Automation center of excellence, it's all about building the right infrastructure, putting together people and knowledge and skills required to actually link between what the business needs and how to actually do it and to make it a live automation journey that continues to evolve for the long term. So sometimes when people hear about center of excellence, they sometimes say, well, what does that really mean? How does an organization structure around what that term means? And is the cost really yeah. offset by the true benefit of a center of excellence? Definitely. Like I said, eventually we're talking about a set of people that have the right knowledge and the tools that they need in order to actually translate the business needs into an automation project. Usually you will start with the three main roles, a center of excellence manager, a business analyst, and an automation developer. And this would be the core of any center of excellence, but from there it can grow and it can take many forms and shapes, starting from a centralized, going to a distributed center of excellence. It doesn't really matter. The bottom line is you have a platform of people and knowledge to actually maintain your automation solution and make sure it continues to grow with the organization for the long term. You don't want to just use the car once and drive it. You want to have it with you for many, many days or years and to see the, the ROI coming back to you. This was amazing today. I think super helpful for me, super helpful for our audience, I'm sure. But we've got to get going yeah. for our meeting or we're going to be late. So but just to close out, thank you everyone for joining us on LinkedIn Live today where we've covered the three best practices in robotic process automation. And they are? They are automation discovery. We had to choose the right car, how to find out which automation processes you really need to automate and how to find those golden opportunities that are going to get you that ROI. 
Second was automation for the people. How do we get a benefit from that virtual attendant on our desktop that is there to help us do our job easier, faster, with less mistakes? That's wonderful. And the third was, before we go, how do we make sure we are maintaining our solution for the long term? Center of excellence for automation is key to ensure success from the long term and to see that value for many years. So this awesome. is it. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank and we'll you. see you on our next broadcast of LinkedIn Live with NICE. Thanks, Omer, David. let's get going. Let's go. Hit the road.